The shoulders are quite possibly the most important muscle group when it comes to building an impressive physique. Not only are the shoulders largely responsible for the width of your upper body, but having a wide frame also creates the illusion of your waist being even smaller than it actually is. If your goal is to look like you lift while wearing an everyday loose t-shirt, growing this muscle group is a must. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do exactly that. To do so, however, we must first begin with understanding the structure and function of the shoulders. The shoulder muscles, also known as the deltoids, are technically a single massive muscle located on the upper body. An interesting fact that most people are unaware of is that the deltoid muscle is considered to be the largest muscle in the upper body in terms of overall volume. Yes, your shoulders are bigger than both your chest and your lats. However, despite being a singular muscle, the deltoid has three distinct regions, the anterior or front delt, middle, side delt, and posterior, rear delt. Each of these three regions of the shoulder performs distinct functions due to the direction of their muscle fibers. The front delt is mainly responsible for shoulder flexion, which is the motion of raising the arm in front and above the body. Similarly, the side delt also raises the arm, albeit straight out to the side in an action known as shoulder abduction. Lastly, the rear delt acts to extend the shoulder, which basically just means pulling the arm behind the body. Additionally, the rear delt also performs shoulder horizontal abduction, which is essentially the opposite motion of a chest fly. Now that we have a solid understanding of how each region of the shoulder functions, it'll make much more sense as to the exercises we choose to target them with. When it comes to training the front delts, the simplest way is through straight shoulder flexion exercises, such as the dumbbell front raise. However, shoulder flexion is also a major component in pressing movements, such as the bench press and shoulder press. Because of this, any chest or shoulder press will heavily target the front delts as well, arguably even more than a front raise would because of how much weight you can use. To train the side delts, you should direct most of your focus to the lateral raise exercise. After all, the motion of a lateral raise is quite literally shoulder abduction, which is a side delt's sole function. Keep in mind, however, that there are dozens of lateral raise variations, so your workout routine should never become stale. Additionally, shoulder presses also contain shoulder abduction. In fact, some studies have even found that the shoulder press causes significant side delt growth, almost as much as a lateral raise. Because of this, lateral raises may not entirely be necessary. Before we move on to the rear delt, I must also touch on the upright row exercise. Although this is a decent side delt exercise, the bent elbows essentially make it more of a trap focused lateral raise than anything else. Furthermore, the internal rotation of the shoulders in this exercise makes it a terrible choice if you're prone to shoulder injuries and pains. Lastly, we have the rear delts. As I mentioned earlier, the rear delts primary functions are to pull the arm behind the body in extension and horizontal abduction. For extension exercises, any rowing movement such as dumbbell rows and cable rows will work great. However, rows in which you purposefully flare your elbows at 45 to 90 degrees will target the rear delts best due to the direction of their muscle fibers. Likewise, horizontal abduction exercises such as face pulls and reverse flies are possibly even better exercises because they naturally force this 45 to 90 degree shoulder angle. Training the different regions of the shoulder can be somewhat self-explanatory once you understand their functions. However, many of these shoulder exercises are extremely reliant on proper form in order to be effective. For example, the shoulder press appears to be an extremely simple exercise. You get the dumbbells up to your shoulders and then just press them over your head. Despite this simplicity, many people fall into the trap of performing half reps by only bringing the weights down until their elbows form a 90 degree angle. Unfortunately, this makes this exercise awful at building muscle when done this way, as the entire deltoid muscle is reliant on stretch-mediated hypertrophy or being stretched fully under load in order to grow. Therefore, if you're skipping the entire part of the movement where the muscle is stretched, you're missing out on nearly 
all of its muscle growth benefits. The lateral raise is also a very technique nuanced exercise as performing this exercise incorrectly can actually work the traps and other regions of the shoulders more than the side delts. First, the simplest way to fix your lateral raise is to adjust your range of motion. This is because the side delts lose most of their leverage when your arm is above shoulder height. Therefore, you don't have to bring your arms above your shoulders in this exercise as this actually just ends up placing more load onto your traps instead of your side delts. Similarly, there's a good chance you're using an incorrect arm path when doing your lateral raises. Most people were taught to lift their arms straight out to their sides. Unfortunately, due to the anatomy of the shoulder, this technique actually ends up involving the traps and rear delts a significant amount. Instead, try lifting your arms about 30 degrees further in front of your body. This movement is known as scaption and is both the most effective way to target the side delts and the safest movement path for your rotator cuff muscles. I should make it clear, however, that you do not want to accidentally turn this into a front raise by moving your arms too far in front of your body. To avoid this, try only moving your arms a tiny bit forward into the scapular plane. Just like the lateral raise, the angle of your arm and shoulder in rear delt exercises is just as important. For both rear delt focus rows and reverse flies, try keeping your elbows at 45 degrees to your sides. As I mentioned earlier, this angle aligns your rear delts perfectly with the movement, resulting in them receiving the best stimulus possible. For exercises like the face pull, keeping your elbows completely flared at a 90 degree angle is also effective at targeting the rear delts, although this angle gets the traps and rhomboids more involved than you might want them to be. Now, before we wrap it all up here, it's time that we utilize everything covered in this video and formulate a perfect all-around shoulder workout. For the first exercise in your shoulder routine, you absolutely should be including a heavy shoulder press. These can be done with a barbell, dumbbells, a Smith machine, or even a typical hammer strength shoulder press machine. Whichever modality you choose, the goal of this exercise should be to go as heavy as you comfortably can. If you wanna get even more front delt focus, try slightly declining the bench to a 75 degree angle. This angle will turn the shoulder press into a high incline or front delt press. This angle will not get your chest involved, but will rather allow you to get an even greater stretch on your front delts and give them more leverage. For exercise number two, choose any lateral raise variation you wish. This could be standard dumbbell lateral raises, cable raises, Egyptian raises, seated one arm raises, cable Y raises, and any others you choose. In general, you're gonna be confined to using light weights on these exercises. However, I would encourage you to still try to progressively overload these, no matter how hard it may be to do so. While I'm not telling you to start maxing out on lateral raises, don't be afraid to be doing heavy sets of eight to 10 well-controlled reps. If this is a stubborn muscle to grow for you, heavy lateral raises may be what you've been missing. Lastly, we have a rear delt focused reverse fly. Now many people choose to train their rear delts on back day. When you consider the functions of this muscle, this makes a lot of sense because of how involved they are with your rowing movements. However, the rear delts are one of the most underdeveloped muscles in most trained lifters, despite them being one of the most important muscles for overall posture. Because of this, even if your rear delts get trained in your back workouts, I highly suggest still including them in your shoulder workouts as they can argue arguably never have too much volume. I recommend performing a reverse fly, whether that be with dumbbells, cables, or a machine, because this is not an exercise commonly used in a back workout and will really enable you to focus solely on the rear delt. Just remember to try and use a 45 degree elbow or shoulder angle when performing these with dumbbells or cables. Now, I only named three exercises as part of this workout. This is because these three exercises are more than enough to sufficiently work the entire deltoid. However, you may very likely need to include an extra exercise for any of the regions of the shoulder that you really want to grow. For most people, this will be the side delts as they're not only the most important region for giving the shoulders a 3D look, but they also don't get trained in any non-shoulder exercises. If this is the case for you, I'd recommend adding in a second side delt exercise in this workout, preferably a different lateral raise variation than the first one you chose. Although following this workout structure will guarantee the growth of your shoulders, it is important to remember that 
how much you grow is very dependent on how much volume you do. I didn't include any set or rep counts in this video because those are things you need to tailor to fit your own goals. In general though, if you wanna ensure you're doing enough in the gym to see growth, try to allocate a minimum of 10 working sets per week to each region of the shoulder. For example, this means you'll likely wanna include 10 total sets of lateral raises every week to grow your side delts. On the other hand, the front and rear delts likely don't need that much targeted volume as the front delts get extensively worked in chest exercises and the rear delts get equally trained in many rowing movements on your back days. As always, if you have any questions concerning your shoulder workouts, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to give you my advice. Please check out the links in the description below to check out my free 28 day acclimation program and I'll also include a link to my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Thanks for watching my video and as always, get busy, get after it, and God bless.